there have been a couple little tips I've kind of discovered over the years about trying to, you know, travel in a way that's comfortable. So, um, first of all, I have a new policy of I do not take early flights. I used to always want to get going and take advantage of every day and forget that. So the absolute earliest I will fly is noon. And even that's a little early because that means I need to leave the house by like at least 9, 9.15 to get to the airport by 10 because they want you there two hours before. And so if I have to leave at 9, I mean I have to take a shower, I've got to put my last minute things in the bag, and it's too stressful. So actually today I'm flying out at 5.30, which worked out really well because a lot of times when you travel you realize you've got like all these like little last minute things or you forget something or like yesterday I realized, oh I want to bring such and such and I wanted to wash it and then I needed to dry it and, and then um, put it in the bag today. So. I like to travel a little later. Usually my ideal is about like 2 p.m. and then I still get there early enough. And then the other thing is, you know, you if you can't afford to upgrade, and I don't usually ever upgrade. What am I saying? I never upgrade. Um, it's just, it's expensive. And so what I've done is a couple things. There's a site called SeatGuru.com and you can go on there and if you, you check your flight reservation and you can find out what kind of plane you're flying and then you can look up that plane and other passengers have reviewed different seats on the plane. Now 95% or more of the seats are all the same. I mean and we all know you know aisles generally best and then window then middle but um, in general they're they're mostly similar but there are usually a few really bad seats and a few really good seats. And you want to make sure, of course, you avoid a bad seat. And sometimes you don't know. Like, it can be very deceiving. I've seen that some seats have gotten complaints from people that are, like, the front row, but they're, they're complaining because there's nowhere to put your carry-on. And also, it's really cold because it's right by the exit door. And there's nothing worse than being cold on a plane. So that's a really useful tool. And this really worked well for me when I went to Australia because I was flying coach. And it turns out there was this one odd seat. It was an, on the aisle. It was like maybe four rows back. And for some reason, there was no seat in front of it. I have no idea why. So it was basically like better than first class. I had no, I had nobody in front of me at all. And um, I would have never really thought of it. I probably would have just picked something on the aisle and not really noticed it because it's kind of unusual. Um, and then the other thing I just learned with this last trip I looked through Expedia, but I'm flying on American, and looking at the itinerary and the confirmation from Expedia, it said something like, you know, you can check American for like final seat choice, and I already picked my seats on Expedia, which be sure to do that if you buy through whatever site you do, be sure to pick your seat. So I thought, well, let me go on American. I thought I picked the best seat, but what the heck, and it turns out there were a bunch of, a bunch of aisle seats that were available and they were farther towards the front and there were actually weren't there weren't people in front or behind either which is nice because like it's nice to not have someone behind you because then they're not kicking you and stuff or they're not screaming it's just good I don't know they'll probably get taken up by the time I get there but I thought I'm gonna try it um, and then also kind of other things I've learned over the years is you know like it's a little nicer to be towards the front of the plane because it's just easier to get in and out I personally prefer aisles for feeling a little bit less cramped and being able to get to the bathroom more easily. It's not nice to be right by the bathroom because there's a lot of just movement and it can also smell. And then also in the back, that's where the flight attendants are, so sometimes they're chatting or they're getting meals ready and it's noisy. So I try to avoid those areas right around the bathroom. So even if there's like a say there's different sections and there's like a, a front row seat right by the bathroom, sometimes it's not a good seat because of just the hustle in the bustle. So, um, oh, and then the other thing I do is I layer a lot. So I'm super comfy today. I'm in the stretch pants. I'm in a turtleneck. Um, I'm only doing that because it's so darn cold here. And I'm just, I'm afraid I'm gonna be cold. And then I have like a fleece jacket and then I'll have a regular jacket. And then that way I can just take on and off as the temperature, you know, dictates. 
Um, I find the air in the plane really toxic, so I always put the like the little air thing on just to try and get some fresh air because it makes me kind of sick. Um, and then I don't really like how the seats are because they, they've not made them ergonomically correct. So a lot of times I'll take my jacket, not this one, but like the coat I'll be wearing, and then I bundle it up and I put it behind my low back so then I feel like it's putting me in a like more appropriate body position. So um, yeah, let me think, is there anything else? Of course, you know you want to make sure you you have your your phone or an um, iPod with music. I also listen to a lot of podcasts. I find that really helpful just to kind of pass the time. Oh, and there's one other thing. Ah, I forgot about this, guys. Sorry. This the handy list. Actually, this is the list that I use. I found this at Anthropology, and it's called Pack This, and it's got a list of like everything almost everything the only thing I had that it did not list was my mouth guard and um, a lot of things I don't need and I just outline them I cross those off but then I just check it and then that way I make sure that I have everything so um, so yeah that's it and I mean you can also make your own list I've kind of done that um, in the past traveling is really stressful but you know I think it's worth the preparation to just know that you have everything that you need you have ways of getting through the time if you have any medical issues if you have sensory issues that you've got different tools to deal with it so anyway those are my tips and like wish me luck I'm not feeling very well today but I'm determined to fly and um, my website's not up yet. It's www.mindofherown.com. It will be up at some point. And I will try to put together like a little write-up or cheat sheet that summarizes some of the things that I talked about today. That's it. Thanks, guys. And I wish you happy travels and comfortable travels.